of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because a carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led, by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also itself helpeth our infirmity, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called them, he also justified. And whom he justified them, he also glorified. What shall we say, then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he be not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who shall... Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I do pray. I come to you first and foremost, God, with prayer and in thanksgiving to give you all the honor and all the glory that you and you alone deserve. I say thank you, Father God, for forgiving me of all my sins, past, present, and future. So as I do pray these prayers before you, Lord God, and as I ask you for forgiving me of all the offenses that I have committed against others, God, those that I have intentionally committed and those that I have not unintentionally committed, so that as I pray these prayers before you, Lord God, they will not fall upon deaf ears. I thank you, Father God, for all those who have continued to stay with us on Blog Talk Radio and My Kings TV. Those that are with us present here, God, we thank you that you have kept us all safe from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen, God. I thank you, Father God, that you continue to bless each and every one of us, God, and that you continue to uh, keep us in your bosom, God. Now, Father God, I ask and pray that you continue to anoint me with a fresh new anointing as I bring forth your word today, Father God, because we must know what is the true work of the church today, God. Because as you say, God, in your word, that charity still begins at home. So I thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name, and for his sake, I do pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I just want to say thank you to everyone who has continued to stay with us, uh, our Block Talk radio family and our new family at My Kings TV. I just thank everyone that has just continued to support us through prayer, through uh, uh, your time, your, 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 your efforts, and we thank you for all the financial support that you have given us. We just like to say thank you. Um, and there is a word from God. Uh, we are a teaching and an evangelistic ministry. We want to say thank you and welcome you here to My King Service, Pentecostal Church of God. And I am, for, for those who don't know me, I am God's pit bull, Apostle Bishop Dr. Shaolin M.B. Abrams. Senior. But before I begin, let me just say that, you know, uh, you've heard the expression that God loves a cheerful giver. But God is not just thinking about uh, of your financial um, uh, donations, your tithes and your offering. We know we have to pay those. But I just want to say this, that Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Amen. But this is my Bible. It is your true word, God, and I believe it. I am who you say I am, and I have what you say I have, and I can do what you say I can do. I am being transformed by the renewing of my mind. Every time I read your word, God, it gets engrafted into and onto my heart. And every time I take another step towards your perfect will, Father God, and I live and I abide in your word, I become more and more like your son, Jesus. I am being energized by the Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Father God, for your knowledge and your wisdom revelation through the Holy Spirit to part on me those mysteries that you wish to reveal. And I have the desire, the discipline, and the determination to be all that you have called me to be. And I love you, and I thank you, and I praise you. And it's in Jesus' name and for us sake, I do pray and give thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. But what is 
the work of today's church. This is part two. Uh, this is the final part in a two-part series that I started last week that we talked about how charity begins at home. And I want to say this, that charity still begins at home. So if you would turn with me to Numbers uh, chapter 9. Numbers the ninth chapter. Numbers the ninth chapter because there is a word from the Lord. Numbers chapter 9 as we go to the 19th verse. And the word of the Lord said, And when the cloud tarried long upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And so it was, when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, According to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents. And according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And it was so when the cloud abode from evening until morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed. Whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed. Or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. When it was taken up, then they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in the tents. And at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. I just want to say that no matter what you do, no matter what you say, that charity or love still begins at home. Amen. Let us look at the last two verses in Numbers chapter 9, verses 22 and 23. It says, Or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journey, they journey, and at the verse twenty-three says at the.